Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Common Sense Guys channel. Today I've found a story that completely and utterly generally makes me angry. Where we have generally a hero police officer that was able to subdue somebody that was attacking him with a machete to be able to subdue him non-lethally and to arrest him. But yet somehow some lawyer somewhere yes it would have to be a fucking lawyer and just like that i'm now demonetized but that's how angry i am at this minute in time suggests that the police should have somehow taken action against the police officer who took down the machete attacker now me personally I think the gentleman in question, the police officer, should get a goddamn medal. But that's just me. So let's get into the actual story and actually see what type of person would actually say that one, a person defending his life should be completely and utterly t apparently taken action against for defending one's life. And then putting it into context that he was a police officer using a taser, why being attacked with a machete, but yet should still have action taken against him because of it. Let's let's take a look. So, as you can see, we're now at the top where it says a lawyer suggests Met Police should take action against cop who took down the machete attacker. Yes, you are correct, it is that machete attacker, that rapist that has actually done it beforehand. The one that got let off because apparently they were able to convince the jury that he had no intent in killing the police officer, even though he was an attacking him with a goddamn machete. Yes, that one. Let's carry on reading, shall we? So, a solicitor has suggested that the Metropolitan Police should investigate Britain's bravest cop over his takedown of a crazed machete attacker. Yes, that name is going to ring a bell, but apparently absolutely no relation, even if the relation between the idiocy and ideology is similar. Sophie Khan, who has represented people injured by a taser weapon, claimed that Mohamed Rodan was acting in self-defence when he attacked PC Stuart Otten with a rusty machete in August last year. Rodwan was sentenced to 16 years in prison with three years on licence for wounding with intent yesterday morning. The 56-year-old handyman was cleared of attempted murder over the incident and Miss Khan suggested the judge understood the argument for self-defense after Rodwan's dreadlocks I think was supposed to say pulled or grabbed but they missed that but that's what I believe that she was going to write the secret barrister a top lawyer who hides behind the anonymous title accused Miss Khan of appalling behavior from a member of a legal profession well depending if they're a defence lawyer or a prosecutor, doesn't it? In general, social media users accuse Miss Khan of being an anti-police lawyer. In this case, I can completely and utterly understand the reasons why. Simply because, why would you want to go against a police officer that only tasered him because he was attacking him with a machete to the point he was being wounded by the machete, had his head hit around about four or five different times, his arms hit about another two, three times on top. Why would a lawyer of any description want to take on a case trying to suggest that the police officer overstepped his mark in defending himself at that point? So, Miss Justice Carr, sitting at the Old Bailey yesterday, rejected the notion that PC Otten had used excessive force and described how Rodan descending into a rage when he was stopped by police for having no insurance in East London. 
So an actual reason why he was being stopped. So it wasn't stopped because of his colour, wasn't stopped because of anything else, but was stopped because he had no insurance on his car. I am pretty sure that the police officer as well would have done a name check to the person who owned the vehicle. Now, Roden's name would have come up if he was registered with that vehicle, which one would assume he is. Of that, that means his past would also come up. His previous of attacking and maiming two other people that he used to live with, with a machete. Also as well before that, a rape that occurred that he was convicted of. That would have come up, so he would have been known as being a dangerous person to stop. But let's carry on. However, Miss Cam wrote on Twitter, she was surprised the Metropolitan Police haven't started disciplinary action against PC Otten for the assault and battery on Roden. Apparently. She claimed the officer's actions were in part found to be excessive use of force and that the case had shown there remains a risk to the public by police misuse of a taser when he was being attacked by a machete. Misuse of a taser while being attacked by a machete. Lucky he isn't in America. The incident has highlighted how many police officers come under attack while on duty, with 5,900 officers and staff being attacked between January and December last year. That's a staggering amount of people that have been attacking the police. In any sort of which situation that may be similar, less or higher to a degree. But that's an amazing figure. So, in a recent interview, PC Otten said, My taser saved my life. If frontline officers want one, they should have one. I completely and utterly agree. And I think that in a crazy world, especially in London or metropolitan areas, where we have massive amounts of knife crime at the minute, to the point even today, that there is a story in a newspaper about people that almost hacked a boy up in East Croydon with a machete to pieces in broad daylight just before rush hour and people want to say police shouldn't at least have a taser in my opinion they should have more than a taser but that's only my opinion what do you guys think in situations of nowadays and how the police are and what they have to deal with and how bad knife crime is in general as one crime do you think that they should be equipped with better equipment to deal with situations, especially considering that most of them are normally operating singularly as well? Or do we think that it's absolutely fine and we should have more police officers like P.T. Otten fighting people in the streets to save their own lives, regardless of other people's? I'll leave that for you to decide because I'm very interested in that. PC Otten goes on to say, I think I first realised what had happened when I was on all fours in the middle of Leighton High Road at just gone midnight, said PC Otten. Carrying on from the quote, before I knew it, I can feel something smacking against the side of my head and my head's getting wet really quickly. Now, if he didn't have intent to kill, and by that I mean Roden, why when the police officer stopped attacking, or stopped defending himself I should say, and was on the floor on all fours, and he didn't, Roden didn't have intent to kill, why would you try and aim for the head with a machete? If the machete wasn't rusted, he would have died. If the machete was as sharp as it's supposed to be, and not old and blunted by obvious stretches of imagination there, he would have died. He would have had his head chopped off, or part of his head cut off. This is the only reason why we're only talking about the idea of him maybe dying and not him dying. After he was whacked in the head with a machete, he, as he says, 
I've got my finger on the taser button, keep the electricity cycling, and there's blood literally looking like it was coming out of a tap from my head, he added. Then my first thought was, I might be in a bit of trouble, and I had to focus on my breathing to stop my heart rate escalating. Blood escalating and losing consciousness. If I had lost consciousness, the taser could stop and he could get back up and carry on. In other words, he was fearing for his life at that period of time. So, I'm again going to ask you guys, do you feel that what PC Otten did here was justified? Do you feel that what Sophie Khan, the solicitor or barrister that's trying to fight for some sort of police excessive force, is right in the transactions in which she's doing or fighting for? Do you think that this is something that really needs to be talked about? Do the police need to be armed at a higher level or in a higher degree just to protect us from criminals? Or just to protect themselves from the criminals? I'll leave those questions all up to you. Thank you very much for taking the time to like, share and subscribe and hopefully watching and listening this, to this video. I appreciate everything that you do, even if you do just like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen and however you may identify. Thank you very much. I will speak to you all again very soon. Take care. Bye bye for now.